And I'm getting mighty tired of your trifling ways and of listening to that jackass Bray. Coming back at you again, Ethereal Philosophy Forum. We got episode six, talking today about a little bit of music and culture. Got a couple of my friends on the panel tonight, Mr. Ryan Hans and my homeboy, musician, songwriter, Jason Frelo. Just checking in with the fellas. What's going on, guys? Hey, hey. How you doing, buddy? Excellent, man. I'm super glad and excited you guys to join us today. Um, we'll hop right in. I don't do a whole lot of uh, pretext, kind of like Jay Free did in the, uh, in the pre-show. They were just going in. <laughs> both feet like like uh what's his name like joey diaz says i'm slinging cock with two hands here cannonballed in cannonballs bro um but hansi was just talking about the uh we're we're in tampa uh hansi was just uh talking about going to the tool concert last week yeah it was amazing you know, the type of experience he had there go ahead man yeah it was uh um you didn't know i didn't know what to expect because i hadn't seen him in a long time um over like 20 years and um, I really don't remember too much of the first time that I saw him. I was in my, you know, twenties. But uh, um, the show that was, it wasn't really just music. It was a cultural, and it's like a, it was like an art exhibit. You know, with the, the setup must have been millions of dollars. Oh yeah. They had, they had a screen around it, and before they started, you didn't, I didn't understand, and I was saying, "What is that screen? It's like, like a little bit obstructing the view." And then when they started, it, the the screen was like a curtain, rather. And uh, when they started, it was a there was a three D projection on the on the entire curtain, in back of the curtain, on the around the stage. It was just amazing, like true artists, man. Just really, they're it's true art, you know, what they put out. It's not just music. They put- they put up the best performance, in my opinion. Maynard yeah. like transcends like this reality. He, he does things that I've I've never like seen anybody do. He'll bend backwards all the way back and sing in perfect pitch. It's like yeah. some. <sighs> yeah. Hey, Jason. You know you know how we've been talking about getting you on the mat. You know Maynard's black belt, right? Oh yeah, I do know that. Brown belt. Brown belt. Yeah. It's brown belt. Sorry, brown, brown belt. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, he's on his That's way. Awesome. He's been training for a long time, man. Yeah. That's really really cool. Yeah, he was talking to Joe Rogan about it. It's cool. And so an you, there's like an older video of him. I don't know. It was maybe like eight years ago. There's an old, he's, I don't know why he's demonstrating it, but he's demonstrating a flying arm bar and it's good. It's a really good arm bar. It's, it's, it's more than decent. It's, it's, it's good. It, you can find it probably on the internet. I, I saw it like a year, years and years ago, but I was impressed 10 years ago. So yeah. He's a very interesting guy. Like he was a comedian before he was a musician. He did comedy. Yeah. He was in the army too. Yeah, yeah. I knew about the yeah. army thing. I didn't know the comedy. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Well, kind of going back to what you were talking about, Hans, like compare what you saw last week to like the first time you saw them 20 some odd years ago. I know you said like stage wise, there was more dollars in the performance, but like that that yeah. impact of like the first time you saw him, obviously you don't remember everything, right? Because it was a while right, ago, right, and you right. you may or may not have been under you know the influence of some high grade water at the time. But uh, like, what did that feel like twenty years ago versus now? Well, it was a completely different experience because it was it was it went from a band that um, was kind of wild and uh, um, off the cuff and um, immature to a band that was fully formed and thinking adults and the music, the music, although I don't see it as that much different, you could still hear the the echoing of the original music and today's music. It's a lot more grown up and it's evolved into something that is more thoughtful, maybe less aggressive, but definitely more thought, thought provoking and, made into more of an art piece rather than just strictly a music piece i definitely think that it's 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 more of a mature adult and um even creepier than it was before (laughs) so jason from the artist perspective what are your thoughts on that that growth and progression that that ryan just talked about the tool but just in general that that kind of span right like there's a lot of bands I'll, i'll frame it a little bit better there's a lot of bands that don't last five years let alone 
have an impact across a 20 year span in, in one listener's lifetime. So like as somebody that creates, not well, just replicates, like what, what do you think, what does that mean to you in terms of the growth or the progression of that artist? Well, it depends because like usually the first uh, few albums are really good because they were hungry before they made it big. And when they make it big, they kind of just like, whatever they made it, they don't care about making music anymore. So it's just like, if they truly have a passion for writing and they evolve in the music, then I think they'll stick around, you know? It's like sure. they grow with their music. But it's some people, a lot of people, like, they just make two or three albums and they'll kind of disappear or fade away. Yeah. Well, just to give you guys a little backstory, uh, Jason's a buddy of mine, but he also <laughs> is a singer-songwriter. He does a lot of originals. And uh, I've only heard him do a couple of covers, so I really appreciate his perspective more so on the creative side of this stuff rather than just kind of consuming like a lot of us do. So, like, you've been a professional musician for how long now? I've uh, been doing it full time professionally for 11 years, but I, I've been into it like uh, about 25 years. Yeah, you told me uh, you, you've been playing music most of your adult life, uh, gigging and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So that's that's awesome. So um, <clears throat> like as you are a creator, you're, you're the type of person that's actually putting the energy out there like for that kind of longevity, similar to like what Tool has. Mm -hmm. Do you find it difficult to keep finding sources of inspiration, things to write about, things to be genuine about? Well, the, uh, for me personally, the songs write themselves, you know, like uh, I'll just kind of come up with a riff and then start improv stuff and then uh, it will form a meaning that like is beyond me. You know what I mean? I just it just starts making sense. So like uh, the key to songwriting like that is basically like <clears throat> uh, being timeless, not not really bringing up current events as much like that's how I've been in the past is trying to like make it more timeless so you could hear it. This song 10 years and have the same feelings, you know, as you did, you know, when I first wrote it. What what mm -hmm. parallel would you do you think helps you find that that timeless, uh, that timeless little niche just, to fall uh, into? It's kind of like uh just a, a right from within, you know, it's it's a really weird thing. It's it's something unique to me, and I think unique to every artist uh, that does actually write like you know from the heart, you know. It's just, uh, it, it's something, it just happens. It's a strange thing. <clears throat> oh, it's, uh, it's a feeling. And then it becomes a song, you know? For sure. So a... Ryan, go, coming up in that, in, that, in that scene that you've told me about with the, the punk and the thrash and all that, and all that, and um, kind of talking to what Jason's coming from here. In your life experience, obviously you've grown a lot in that 20 years as well. Do you think that your tastes have changed and the music in that genres kind of stayed the same or that you've both kind of evolved in parallel? Um, with them in particular or all of my music? Just your musical tastes in general. I just use those <laughs> uh, as an example. It's art, man. Um, I, I've, I've abandoned the, I don't listen to this type of music. I only listen to that type of music. That's what's changed in my life. I can find, it's art. Um, I can, I can enjoy, any type of art like just about from classical to i i grew up in the city and I, I didn't grow up like with country music around but man there's some country music that's kick ass man that's it, stuff that really smart and good um country music that um really speaks to me and i don't have anything to do with the country really <laughs> <laughs> It's, it really it, it's still it's still all just art man and and um i can find not all music but i can find uh, any genre of music i can find now i can find uh something that i enjoy it wasn't like that before i mean i just wanted hard aggressive raw stuff that um that other people than um adults didn't like but uh, why, why do you think that is why do you think what? the aggressive harder stuff spoke to you so much i was a young angst ridden boy you know um i didn't want to i didn't want anything that that everybody had in, in society i wanted the opposite of, of whatever you said was right whatever you said was, against uh, the grain yeah well that, that's i'm not unique you know sure. that's, all my friends we were all like that anything that was new that came out you know you know you you, you wanted to it had to be cool if it wasn't cool it was automatically shit you get it out of here <laughs> smash it break it and right. get that, that was a good time music yeah so, so with with what you guys were talking about and, and i kind of want to draw back to what you said a little bit too there jason 
that timelessness, at least to me, I'm not, I'm not a musician. Okay. I consider myself an artist in different facets, but not, not musically. Um, that the timelessness to me is, is the, the truth in that communication, the, the feeling, the emotion, right. the, the truth in, in conveying an experience, the stuff that kind of falls mm -hmm. off is the, like you said, Jason, the stuff that's a little bit more pointed in terms of like specific topics, like this president, that political issue, whatever it is, that's right to me ages a lot more poorly where I could hear something from the forties that speaks truth. And you can listen to that for 40 years from now, and it'll still be the same vibe. You'll still be able Relevant. to pick up on that. Absolutely. Uh, it keeps the relevance. For sure. So for the stuff that like you're talking about now, Ryan, obviously I got stuff I don't listen to right now either, but it's not because of the mm -hmm. genre. Like you said, it's, it's more the message or what, what the music's actually kind of, putting out there and that's kind of a little bit more I wanted what I wanted to dig into when we talk about this episode um, but I, I'll kind of start with you on this one Jason when you're when you're writing songs sure. versus some of the more popular things that you hear on the radio obviously there's themes in, in a lot of the popular music today do you find yourself wanting to go more towards those themes to embrace what's popular or shying further away from it in your songwriting oh Absolutely. I, I want to create my own path. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of a lot of stuff they're talking about. I think uh, they're kind of materialistic and like, you know, and a lot of music, I'm not saying all the music, but I'm saying what's big on the radio is about being promiscuous is about, you know, it's, about, it's not the direction I want to point, you know, I'd rather uh, write about being uh, like, like perseverance, you know, write about, write about something like a, a, a problem with, with a solution, you know, Instead of just being like a doomsayer or, or you know, uh, I want to write about love rather than you know being lustful, you know, just I kind of want to go on the against the grain in that because sure. I think they're not they're not really in the right path with it personally. What yeah, and I, it's annoying. It's, it's very annoying. <laughs> it's actually my biggest pet peeve as a being a musician is seeing like people follow the the false leaders, you know. It seems boring to me too. The the music that you're speaking of, the promiscuous this, yeah. the atrocious that. I mean, right. there's hip hop in the early, late '80s and early '90s that that touched on that stuff, but it was it was original back then. Now it's right, just right. right. Like we heard all that. I got this. I got that. I can do this. I can do that. That yeah. kind of and they're recycling the beats too it's not even original yeah, beats over, dude every I'm, single song's yeah. over an old beat from the 90s yeah right. <laughs> ruining it ruining it Just ruining it. yeah so i was talking about this with tracy the other day obviously i've got a 10 year old daughter ryan i know you've got a daughter in her teens we think about this stuff right ah there she is <laughs> probably pissed that you just put her on camera but like i was sitting here saying the exact same thing to tracy this music it's all about pussy popping this how many dicks can i fit i'm gonna suck this i'm the baddest bitch blah 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 mm. and it's gross to me right it's either that or it's about suicide that's that's all that's on the mute that's on the radio right yeah now. and that's so, so true and like i i'm sitting here telling and i'm on my high horse and feeling all good like you know back in my day music was better and then she's like you know we were listening to two live crew right and i'm like ooh. <laughs> oh, I love two live crew. <laughs> Ugh, yeah i forgot <laughs> about two live crew Ooh, 69 boys. boys. Ooh, yeah. But yeah, like you know, said, there's really a bit, there's a tinge of originality there that gives it a little bit more fun, but I can't exactly mm -hmm. just point. Eh, two Live Crew is that good, pussy, dude. I got, <laughs> but, I got a good, I got a good Two mm -hmm. Live Crew story. Um, I came home from yeah, exactly. uh, when I was a kid. I was probably like 16. And I came home, uh, I came home uh, from school. And um, I walked in the door and my dad was home and he, my dad, I guess he saw it on the, on the news or, or something, Luke Skywalker, two live crew. And he said, hey, Weez, he used to call me Weasel. He called, said, hey, Weez, he said, what do you know about this Luke Skywalker? And I was like, what, like Star Wars? And he's like, <laughs> he's, like he's like, nah, the guy sings about this and about that. And he's like, he's like, can you get that album? I was like, yeah. You just go to the record store and you buy it. And he's like, yeah, but I don't, I'm old. I don't want to go in there and get that. <laughs> and he had me go in and buy him Luke Skywalker. Um, and uh, also Tone Loke. He wanted Tone Loke. <laughs> that, it was good, too. That was good. He's, 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 he's all the time. 
It was on autumn auto road all the time. That's all he played then in the house. <laughs> to had, piss had off. Had the wheeze go get the explicit content for yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Jason. I know you were going to jump in there. You do have a lot of great artists like right, like uh, Mac Miller. He'll talk about relevant things. You know, he'll he'll uh, he'll say nice. You know, he'll be real and philosophical. A lot of stuff. Um, so we have that now. My girlfriend Anna was bringing that up, so I want to mention that. It's true, but like uh, I think a lot of the dirty stuff was in the background. You know, it wasn't like it wasn't on the radio. It wasn't mainstream. Like the song of the year was WAP. You know, and you got kids singing that in the back seat of the car. You know what I mean? Yeah, wow. Bro, back back that ass up was on the top of the chart for like a year and a half. What are you talking about? Well, you know, but I, like, I played Cheeto Finger for at least two summers to that song. Cheeto Finger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I okay, get back back your ass up was was good, but it's more of a dance. It's not talking about like a wet ass sexual organ. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's definitely more vulgar for sure. There's another one on the radio right now called uh, Big Dick Energy. I think it's fucking hilarious, but I won't let my kid listen to it. <laughs> Oh, she's listening to it. Oh, so not, like, not with me. She goes. She's a, she dance. She goes to dance practice. I guarantee her dance teacher's playing it for her. Jesus, see, like that's that's the part that bothers me. They're over here singing the songs in the back of the cars, you know. And it's like that's in their head. You see, music, music's huge. Like what you sing and what you repeat and the melodies, like that actually does something. I believe to your subconscious, to your mind. You know, music has a big, a big role in the way we think. I really believe so. I mean, it so does for me. Back in the songs, back in the days, like music, and I'm sure you you know this. Obviously, I, I'm not like learned in music theory or, or history or anything like that. But no, no. culturally, music used to be a way of conveying stories. Like it, it was it was put to limericks and, and rhymes because it was easier to remember and it was exactly easier to convey information. And from there, we get obviously different genres and stuff like that. But it just originally started as a way for people to communicate and tell stories and remember them because it was it was said in time and, and rhyming words and limericks. So I, I fully believe that there are certain aspects to that, just like an impactful story like that. The first time you see fucking Pop Gun or, or something like mm -hmm. that shit can stick with you. Like I have a buddy literally the movie. It's a, he flies for the Blue Angels right now. We're not close. We weren't close since high school, but dude went and became a pilot because of Top Gun. Like that shit sticks with some people. So I have no doubt in my mind that music can have the same influence. Well, yeah, it, it does for me. Like uh, the, the way that I like to write is if I, I have a problem, some kind of obstacle, some kind of like anything, you know, I'll write the problem. Then within that, I will write the solution. So like the, the more I played at my shows, the more that I'm singing it in the car by myself or it's in my head, it's, just, it's giving me the problem and the solution, you know? And uh, I, I think that's what music, as long as it has a message, it's good to me, honestly. If it has a, a positive message, even, I guess even if it isn't, if it's negative, it's still a good song. It's, it's a perspective, but like I prefer to write in a positive direction, you know, personally, but <clears throat> I think as long as it has a message, it's, it's good, you know? And um, I think we're kind of we straight away from that. What, what really gets me excited, I mean, there's these major, major shifts. Um, we haven't, I don't feel, or maybe I'm out of touch, but I don't feel like we've had one in a long time. I agree with you. I've been waiting for it. There, I am so waiting for something new, yeah. something fresh. I mean, you had, you had blues, then you had rock and roll, then you had um, punk rock, new wave, then rap came out. And, and blew everything up and then grunge came and then you had different types of hip hop that splintered after that and um and then smaller things in between that but what's coming new there's it doesn't it seems like there's been dry for so long it's a and feminine it's like, a feminine suicide hip hop is what's going on right now yeah you're right and, and it's kind of it's kind of sad unfortunately but that's like the popular to be honest thing. with you I feel like the wedge in this in this progression is EDM. I'm not saying I'm, I'm against it. I'm, I'm actually a fan of a lot of it, but it just took it took a lot of attention away from songwriting in general. I feel, you know. Ryan, and you got to talk. You just rolled your eyes for ten minutes. Say mm. speak on it, Doug. There's a, there's a, <laughs> I, I have a friend that I have a friend. I love this guy. This guy's the best. Um, I work with him. He's one of my favorite people. And we used to we go out to eat. Um, him and his girlfriend and me and my wife would go out to eat. We just used to go out to eat all the time. So um, even when I didn't work with him, I, I moved to, I branched away for a while. But like when we we went, we were out to eat one time, and I was like, oh, we're going to see this show. We're going to see that show. This band. 
And he's like, oh, we're going to Las Vegas for an EDM convention next month. And I was like, what? I knew I there was something I hated about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't I, know. I recently, uh, I've, I've heard some EDM that was interesting because my drummer, he's a, he's a DJ. So like I watched what he did and he's actually, he makes his own beats and stuff. So there's like, yeah, there's an uh, element of, of, um, of uh, artistry to what he does. There's a lot of button pushers, which gets zero percent of my respect. But like, because it's like they call themselves musicians, but it's no, no you're not, you know. I gotta but be like, honest, in my opinion, I don't know much about EDM, so I, I I probably should stop doing the thing that I said earlier that I don't do. I don't listen to this, or I don't listen to that. <laughs> I should probably try. Well, it's basically but, something you have to be drugged out on to, to like really, really appreciate. Yeah, it's it's rave. Guy, you know what the this guy, this guy, my friend that um told me mm-hmm. like the edm uh um convention in las vegas you know what the worst part about mm-hmm. him is he's going there completely sober he's oh, going to man. Wow. Convention sober. Uh, wow that that's the part i forgot <laughs> to say that that's the worst part <laughs> oh man that's no good nobody yeah, wants to do that sober that's so- Oh boy. Well, so you guys were talking we were we barely we touched on it briefly there before we got on the edm tangent but like the impact that like psychologically that, that music can have at a young age into your teens, those developmental years, like you talked about, Ryan, you're out there, you're angsty, you just, you want to go against the grain. You're looking for something that resonates with you that says, yes, fuck yeah, against the grain, fuck everybody, let's go. It's that high energy, boom, boom, boom. That kind of music probably fueled many a night where you did shit that you probably shouldn't have done, right? <laughs> um, It definitely was alongside of it for sure and soundtrack the, right yeah. so the soundtrack of, of the Slayer. soundtrack <laughs> it's wild like the 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 music the soundtrack aspect of it when we're talking about that psychological imprint it's like um you guys ever smell like something that you like, like that fresh cut grass smell something you haven't smelled in a while that instantly takes you back to a place oh, yeah. you dude there's yeah. songs I can hear in particular that'll take me instantly. Like I'm in a time machine right back to like the eighth grade dance or in the woods in sixth grade screwing around with my buddies or in high school with this girl or doing this after the football game or the track meet or whatever. And I don't necessarily associate it with that memory, but when I hear the song, it's just boom, I'm instantly pulled back into that space and time. Yeah. So there, there's got to be deep rooted psychological impact with these things. Even if that song was playing at that moment or not, it gets associated and locked in like that. And we're instantly able to transverse between those moments. Go ahead, Ryan. Sound, sounds, I always say this too, sounds and smells are so close, really closely linked to memories. I mean, mm-hmm. like the thing, like, I, I mean, I didn't discover it. It's, it's a thing like sound and um, smells are just bring trigger memories. They're, they're connected to them. And you can't get away from them. If you had something traumatic or you had something wonderful happen in your life, if you if there was a distinct smell in there, even if it had nothing to do with it, it'll bring you right back to that back to that moment. And there's no denying it. I mean, it comes it comes back fast. But uh, um, it's just those things are connected to to memories and they're powerful, man. And um, a, a, a crazy, wild upbringing of many, many experiences and different things. I mean, in music being along all the way, a, along the way, I have a million things that are triggered all the time with music. Mm-hmm. Even, if, even if it's just a simple beat that somebody's taken and putting into a new song that came out last week. Oh, perfect example bad brains they're all over monday night football it's bad brains playing over and over and over and i've walked into a car i'll hear reignition and i'm like how did they get this but it triggers it right away mm-hmm. to the past mm-hmm. like there is one in particular and i, I like you said i can probably think of a, a few different examples but there's one in particular and it's probably i think late 90s early 2000s it was uh Aaliyah and Timberland there is it's called mm-hmm. are you that somebody there's like a baby in the yeah. background yeah. weird like weirdest song but instantly I'm transported into the back of my coach's forerunner with like five of my teammates and all of our pads driving over the skyway going to play Palmetto and I think it was my varsity mighty my ear I was maybe 12 years old fat kid playing with all the 14 year olds but that specific 
frequency range or that specific song, when I hear that part of that, I'm instantly in the back of my coach's forerunner driving in that Palmetto game, and I'll never forget it. The smell of all those funky ass teenagers and all of our pads that weren't washed and stunk like hell in there. He had no mm-hmm. AC. I, I remember every detail about it. Yeah, so strong. You remember the vehicle, the type of vehicle. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. that's that's strong. You know, like it brings you right there. Like right yeah. there, dude. It's like time travel. It's it's insane. It's absolutely insane. And some of those some of those best memories that I have, I can associate with those things. And actually, we talked about a couple of weeks ago um, in our episode on perception versus reality, episode five. If anybody else is out there, check out the YouTube and hop on that. Um, but we actually talked about like the visible light spectrum for humans, the the frequency range that humans can hear, um, the the taste range in terms of how many taste buds we have versus other animals, like. So much of our experience is filtered through those senses and we, we build this overall picture, but it's very limited sample size to what is actually real. So it, like, like you guys were talking about how it can kind of time travel and bring us back. It almost makes me think and wonder like how much of that is actually accurately remembered versus being filled in by the supercomputer. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> It'll change over time, like your memory of something. You think that it's so clear, but if you if you would have had a video camera, like they do, they video everything today. Um, you go back, and your memory has changed so much. It's your memory wild. has changed so much on it. So, it, and 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 to speak on what you were saying about um, <clears throat> how everything to you to you you see it one way and that's your image of the way that, that you see it but everybody's experience is completely different so everybody's hearing um, songs differently their the perception and how they impact them is different because everybody's uh, perception of of what's going on is completely different just like you see uh, colors or art um you see it and you see a blue color you see a blue color nobody else is seeing that blue color exactly exactly the way you're seeing it it's such an amazing thing and that's music is takes that to the fullest extent because it's sound and sounds linked to memories and then your memories your memory is 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 not the same exactly the same even if you were at the same place with your friend it's not exactly the same and the music isn't exactly the same it's just infinitely um, it goes on and on and on, and that's the life experience. And everybody's is so much different, and uh, that's what's great about life, and that's what's great about art. I think. Well, it really is. It really is like uh, like taste buds and and like your taste in music. Everybody has a different. It's so personal, you know. Mm-hmm. Like someone can hear this, be like, "Oh, it reminds me of this Voice the Men song I heard when I was in the night, you know. Like, and it just because of that, they kind of latch onto it, or like, "Oh, this song reminds me of my mother." Or mm-hmm. someone might not like a song because it reminds you of their mother. It's, it's it's so personal. It can be taken in so many different ways. And like you said, when someone hears a song, they're listening to someone might be more drum prominent. They'll be like, oh, the drums on this are, is amazing. You know, or like, dude, you hear the riff, the bass riff on this. It's so personal. And that's mm-hmm. why, like, as, as a writer, if someone doesn't like my music, which odd, oddly enough, I've never come across anybody say it to my face, you know, but like, mm-hmm. I'm sure there are people. But, <clears throat> um, you know, I, I'm open to someone not liking us certain song it's like well it's just the way it is you're not gonna like everything i do you know mm-hmm. and i'm not gonna write according to that you know yeah I, i've known people that um will not listen to good music good thoughtful mm-hmm. like people like music that it doesn't matter what type it is and it's not my opinion there's good music and then there's really shitty music all yeah. they want is a steady diet of fast food music <laughs> That's a great way to put it. Over and over and over. Gold star. Fast food yeah. music. Fast food music. And I remember I said it's like, you know, I want I, I to make gourmet music. We stop, for, we stop for fast food. You know? It's McDonald's and Wendy's, dude. It's McDonald's mm-hmm. and Wendy's. Fuck yeah. That's yeah, a great analogy. Say that all the time. It, it's, it's good once in a while, but eating that shit all the time will make your ears bleed. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Make your brain dumb. Yeah, it's, well, it's good. Like you said, it's good to go out and have a, have a good time. Maybe have a beverage, get your shake your tail feather once in a while. But you can't sustain yourself on that yeah. diet. It, like it doesn't. It's work. Okay to back yeah. it up with a walk. Everybody's been to Every karaoke. Now go. Everybody's been to karaoke, and that guy does baby got back. Yeah, and it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Completely off rhythm, but he's having a good time. It's a good. It's fun, yeah. man. Awesome. No, it's it's uh, it, it really makes you think with with this depth 
of impact that music can have on our lives, I think that that is steered more by the tone of music is pushing the narrative for culture forward or is the culture pushing the narrative of the music forward, Jason? Well, I'm going to get a little conspiracy theorist on it. And I think there's a force behind it. Uh, I I think there's a force behind pushing the culture to push the music. I think they're trying to dumb us down. But back up two steps. So you're saying culture is pushing music. Well, I'm not asking you to defend. I just want to hear your perspective. No, no, I understand. I think music is meant to inspire culture. But I feel the culture is inspiring the music right now by ill intention. So somehow it's become inverted. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's the problem. There's it lacks a real message, you know. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, like organically, music should do that. But I think there's a driving force behind the intention of wh- what's going on right now. You know, I, I feel like there's a bunch of people with uh, selfish minds, uh, maybe even sick minds, uh, who are saying, "Right about this. Right about you know, not one. You know, screw your man. Go out with your girls. Do what you want. Single ladies. You know what I mean? Like." I know that's an old fucking song from a long time ago, but like that is basically the premise of how it is. Like you don't need your man, you don't need love, blah blah blah. You know, it's it pushes for promiscuity. Well, those tones Keith have is been here. echoed um, in. Well, I mean, if we're gonna go conspiratorial, obviously the in the black community with welfare not qualifying unless there is no man in the house, um, right. Uh, you know, crack cocaine being sentenced three times as much as powder cocaine. Like there, there's all kinds of different things you can point to, to the cultural reinforcement of, of those mean. of those agendas. So you think it's pretty clear, but I would argue in counterpoint, not argue, counterpoint to that. This has been going on for a very long time. You can go back as far oh, yeah. as the the 50s and 60s with like, like Elvis, Morrissey yeah. and some of the Elvis, some of these guys that have mm-hmm. documented f- parents that are, you know, in intelligence, which I don't know if we have to get that crazy into it, but you, you guys, we've all talked about like how crappy some pop music is. That's not a new fad. Like cr- a lot of pop yeah, music yeah. has been dog shit for the last, uh, most of my lifetime. I'm under yeah. the impression that there might be a reason that some of these people get propped up versus other ones. So I don't, I'm, I'm not necessarily willing to disagree convinced. with you. Well, look at Miley Cyrus, you know, like she's Hannah Montana, sing, you know, <laughs> yeah, but you don't gotta sing, like her, she can sing. sing, she can sing like a mom, yeah, she really yeah. can, I, you, but, but the thing is, like, wait, wait, her, wait, hold on. Is my, uh, wait, Miley Cyrus is Hannah Montana, shut it you down, it's over, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually, I, I'm impressed, spoiler you alert, you didn't know that, <laughs> yeah, but, th- but she led, she led everybody, she led everybody, like all, all the kids, into a direction, like as anybody from the Disney Club does. And then they go into this different route where it's like, why did you do that? Like you come from pure, like, but then it, but then it, but then they go into that direction of like, of being like this, like screw the rules. And I'm not saying like follow the rules. I'm just saying like the direction of like popping on 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 uh on on stage and and being over sexualized you know well, and that thing sex uh, is bad but but again this is prior to her britney spears mickey mouse club first yeah, music mouse video club. she's in a mini skirt dressed as a schoolgirl. oops i did again yeah mm, i mean yeah well if they got older they got they got into drugs and they enjoyed drugs and they had shitty childhoods so that's kind of like normal just to go nuts and and then start <laughs> You know, I don't see it. I don't see it as anything like I'm not too worried about it. And I'm not, they just got they got a little bit older. They had shitty childhoods and they and what shitty childhoods usually turn to do a whole bunch of drugs. And, and they were in the spotlight and it got heightened more and they, they just blew it out of proportion. And and then that that accelerated their um, their outlandish behavior and their lifestyles and fueled it for more and more. And it just ran away. That's so what do I you, see. Do you think that that stuff is being selectively hyped up or, or pushed further but than pretty- what we would consider, like we talked like, about before, like good good music, music, music with a message. I don't know. Like, I just, people are like, tell me what to do right now. Like, especially in the recent history, they're just like, tell me what to like. Tell me, just tell me what to like. Tell me what to just give me anything. And then people that aren't that creative are just coming out with the stuff and it's like, okay, that's there. I like this. I'll, I'll take it. And then it goes into like, it'll, then those people get copied in that 
that photocopy of the shittiness just keeps getting repeated, repeated, repeated. Bro, something, it's multiplicity. Something's going to come and it's going to smash all this. And there's not going to be any more hair bands, just like the hair band. They're going to be, they're going to be gone. Like the hair bands. They're just going to disappear. Something's going to come new, going to come and it's going to smash all this. I'm waiting for it. I'm excited about it. I don't care what it is. I don't care if I'm too old to enjoy it. I'm just want to see something come new and just smash it. Yeah, one of the crazy things, and you know, Ryan, you kind of touched it a little bit, but it's like it's they go through that phase. But see now, especially with social media and everything, the, the phase is so publicized. So it's like you know they have their YouTube, their Instagram, their Twitter followers, Snapchat, all that stuff. So all the kids that look that follow their music and almost kind of idolize them kind of like, you know, we always heard stories about, you know, our favorite musicians growing up where, you know, oh, someone so might trash a hotel room or like that kind of stuff or, you know, but, you know, it was like, a, you know, kind of just like a pop culture kind of thing. We was like, there was no proof. Every once in a while, somebody might sneak into the room or take a picture or something like this. Mm -hmm. But these kids these days, I mean, their whole lives are on some type of social media. It's recorded. It's a, so like, you know, and, you know, our kids kind of, you know, they're kind of look up to these kids or, you know, it's kind of, they're kind of praised upon. So it's like these actions and things they do actually becomes publicized and then it's almost accepted as normal. So it's almost normal to have these type of reactions to things because, hey, well, so-and-so did it. So, you know, I, she has, you know, 10 million followers on Instagram and if she did it and look at all the likes and views she got. So I guess it's okay for me to go out and do that too. So yeah. the, the ripple down effect to it is, you know, now that it's so publicized and so out there, it's become, it's sadly becoming normal where for us, you know, we, you know, like I said, we would hear stories about, you know, you always heard about the things, you know, like Ozzy Osbourne bite the head off of, you know, and like doing all the snorting, all the, the ants and like that kind of stuff. But it was like, oh, that can't be real. And there was no picture proof. So it was just like, it was like, you know, folklore stories where, you know, you got these other people out there doing all this crazy stuff. Now it's like, you know, you could just Google any pop star from the last like 10 years and find something stupid they did. And it's just like, you know, you got video after video after video of it. So it's just kind of like, it's become normal and kind of over publicized and it's, you know, kind of been accepted now. Yeah. To build on that too, like the, um, the Instagram and the, um, all the different forms of social media, that's kind of, maybe there is something behind it. Maybe there is something driving it because there's all these different outlets and um, the kids nowadays, they look to that to see what they should like or what everybody else is watching. When I was a kid, it was like, Eddie got a tape of this band. You got to hear this band or this album came out. Check out this picture disc. It's wild. You got to listen, listen to it. And it was like stories and you'd get music like that from people that maybe had similar interests because they were your friends. And, um, and you get your new music like that. Now it's just like, let me flip on my phone and see what everybody's listening to. And that's my small pool of what I can, what I can uh, um, select from. And you're not really, they're not even, you're right. They're, they're, they're not even really making a selection. It's just like, it's there and it's pushed and it's, it's driven. But like, I learned about bands from fanzines and like magazines that people <laughs> made you'd see wild pictures and drawings and stuff or gg allen's gonna kill himself and everybody in the club and, and me and my friends would be like shit we gotta get there this is gonna be a good show <laughs> but no, you, you guys bring up really important points that i don't think we considered before but the advent of social media and and this right the the readily the readily available access to it even and i'm a little bit younger than you guys um not by much, but when we were coming up in those formative years, like you had to seek out the music. I had to fun. go record it off of the radio and, and sit there and wait for the, the record and the play button at the same time. Or I had to have a buddy, hey, like you said, check this out, check this out, give you the magazine. You had to seek it out. Whereas like you said now, Keith, it's dumped on you. And not only is it the music, it's the artist's personal life, it's their car, it's who they're banging it's it's what they got what they don't got what they ate last week and now like you said it, it's more that are you can you keep up with whatever this celebrity is doing versus just like do you like the music or not that's another layer that i don't think we necessarily even had to deal with 
Yeah, it's di it's different now. It's yeah, different. Yeah, I remember I just had a conversation with like one of the boys this week and I was like, a song came on. I was like, oh, I remember going to Sam Goody to like get the single when the when the album dropped <laughs> on that Tuesday, because like that's what you had to do. You had to go to like Sam Goody, wall to wall. You had to like sit there and like go on that Tuesday and like, you know, after school, you would run over on that Tuesday to the mall and like grab your, you know, the new, all the new music. And that was the only way you could get it besides, you know, if it was on the radio and, you know, hopefully you could hit the play record at the right time where they, you know, they DJ stopped talking right at that one point. And of course you're like, Oh, I missed it. <laughs> but mm -hmm. yeah, like that was the only way we could get music and the way we heard about, you know, our favorite artist was like, you know, entertainment tonight and like that kind of stuff or, you know, well, MTV when MTV came out, but they never really talked about truly the bad things. It's kind of like you know all the concerts and like that kind of stuff. Um, it was never really pushed a lot of the negative things on MTV, especially when MTV was in its you know younger formative years. It wasn't a lot of you know when they did MTV news. Like you every once in a while you would hear something bad, but it wasn't a lot of that agenda where it was like pushing like negative things or violence or that kind of stuff and when mtv kind of started pushing that it was more so the big movement for like stop the violence when like that became a big thing with gun violence and that kind of stuff and police brutality when that came out with that whole movement of you know stop the violence with public enemy and all those guys and krs1 came out with that album like that's what mtv was really pushing like there wasn't a lot of true kind of flash kind of media kind of things or shock media kind of stuff it was more so like positive things about you know as society changed then they kind of went more towards you know you had the real world come out and like all those kind of things and but before that it was truly about the music and they, you know they had mtv unplugged and all that kind of cool stuff it was truly just about the music it wasn't about shock value or anything like that it was just like you know we got all these great artists let's hear them unplug now let's go on and do a whole unplugged series i mean that stuff was phenomenal uh my oldest son has their nirvana unplugged on, on his <laughs> iphone like, it's a great album um so it's just like you know those things we don't have that anymore and the kids don't have that they just have this pop you know i think you said popcorn culture or drive or whatever culture you had said earlier drive, through, yeah. drive through drive through culture yeah it's like you know everything's quick and music's horrible you know <laughs> it's so hard <laughs> You could also learn about bands. Like I learned about bands by going seeing going to see other bands. Like in 1987 or 88, I go see uh, Beastie Boys, License to Ill tour. Um, that tour, not the one with Run DMC. Before Run DMC, they did the, the tour License to Ill. It was Murphy's Law opened up, Public Enemy next. And then Beastie Boys. I was like, I knew Murphy's Law. I only heard that Public Enemy were a bunch of troublemakers. But as soon as I got the next day, I went and bought like all anything Public Enemy I could get. They had the S1Ws out there with guns. I was like, this is perfect, man. And we were all skateboarders. And we were all like, what is this? It's not for us. But it's like the same thing that we like. But it's so we dope. All, <laughs> we all bought that with Oh man, the show was awesome. There was Murphy's Law, and we saw Murphy's Law 10, 20 times before that. But then there was this these guys, they were crazy. I thought they were gonna shoot the place up. <laughs> we're talking about with those those influences. Like, how did you as a musician and a songwriter now, a little different perspective <laughs> than we have, how did you get some of those musical influences back in the day? And how much of an effect does that have on you, the artist, now? Um, well, uh, I, I started off listening to like uh, what my parents listen to, like most people. But when I started getting my own uh, individual uh, like taste, I started off listening to like Deftones and uh, like Corn and all the heavy stuff, you know. And then uh, I got into Incubus, which like is when I started like to I started mimicking Brandon Boyd, learning how to sing like him. And he's like he started he was talking about like uh, a lot of philosophical topics and a lot of spiritual things like, you know, make yourself, you know, don't let the world make you and, you know, experience the warmth before you grow old and like all kinds of stuff that really spoke drive, to me. Drive, like, baby. Drive. Did that make yourself album, like change my life, change my life. Like, you know, like, and I was listening to it earlier today, you know? So like stuff back then, uh, it inspired me because I was a different person. I was, I was at a different 
I was a different sponge, you know. Uh, as I got older, um, I just listened. To, I, I guess I started listening to more folk, you know, um, because like the stuff on the radio really didn't interest me. You know, it just I, I didn't like that. It felt like handpicked, you know, and it wasn't really for me. But um, I started listening to a lot of like underground stuff like M. Ward and Bright Eyes and stuff like that. Just stuff that spoke to me, that, that spoke about life experiences and how, how to get over them in one, in one way or the other, you know. But uh, as far as inspiration from today, I, I listen to lo-fi beats a lot because it's just good for the back of my head, you know. I don't really listen to like like much outs, outside of that, to be honest. You're more specifically listening to the frequency resonance than the actual beats. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I, I listen to binaural, binaural beats and frequencies is what I listen to. Well, like, you, just, you jumped on a topic there, and I kind of want to hear from the other two real quick as far as that, that album, that quintessential album that maybe uh, altered your path a little when you were coming up. Monty, which one's that for you? Rain and Blood. Hell Slayer, yeah. Rain and Blood. Yeah, for sure. Rain Gee? and Blood. Every <laughs> he's muted like, you reading? like one album just one <laughs> one of the one of the ones that changed your path it doesn't have to be you it know does. the end all the end all yeah oh <laughs> i think when i was young young i'd probably say it was uh earth wind and fire oh, yeah. Um, yeah so shining star was just you Game know changer. Yeah, and it was one of the ones where, you know, hanging out with my uncles, I wouldn't see them often, but they would always kind of have that blaring. Uh, but I was, that's how I kind of got into Earth, Wind, and Fire was through them. So I would definitely say, like, yeah, that's definitely one for me. Hell yeah. So my old man had um, David Ruffin and the Temptations. That one was a huge one for me. I had never heard a soul singer with the type of passion that David Ruffin sang with that, like that one is one I remember listening to the 33 with my old man. Um, and it was like a, it, it was like a out of body experience. The first time I like felt David Ruffin sing, not just hearing it, but actually like felt it like, God, this man went through some shit. Like I didn't even know about anything yet, but this dude, he's you gone through it. some shit, man. Yeah. That was oh. one of those ones, man. Like, God, damn like sing mm. dude <laughs> i feel like i have to give bc boys more credit i, I listen to bc boys a lot growing up i, I didn't mention that i listen a lot, i still listen to bc boys a lot actually it's it's like my go-to i'm noticing a lot of parallels we all have similar veins in the things that we like maybe not the same bands or artists but we have similar veins in the type of things that we like absolutely yep for sure it's good music Right. And I think it kind of goes back to that parallel we were talking about with that, with the aspect of truth, you know what I mean? That, that it's, it's communicating the message. It's, it's goes back to those kind of ancient roots of, of telling the story. Like you, like you mentioned, Jason, there's something that's timeless about that. Like the, the story of, uh, you know, overcoming adversity or, or falling in love. Like it doesn't matter what year it is or, or when or heartbreak those are themes that are never going to go away. You know what I mean? That's something mm -hmm. that everybody can relate to. It doesn't matter what your preference is, you know, what you like to do, what pronouns you like, any of that nonsense. Those are themes that are never going to go away. You know what I mean? <clears throat> it's super, it's, it's super right. important to, to keep that stuff and, and to remember that, that the feeling behind it, I think is the most important thing. And uh, you as a songwriter, you know, is it difficult maybe when you're trying to em employ that creative process, is it, is it difficult if you're not going through something to be able to communicate that kind of thing musically? Good question. Well, that's when you write the happy songs. That's when you write the songs about like, you know, uh, you write from a higher perspective, you know, like you kind of lead through the garbage rather than walk through it, you know? And I like it. I mean, uh, there's sunshine and there's rain, right? You gotta have you gotta have it for all yep. seasons. That makes that makes perfect sense. So I like not ever being a part of that process. Like Ryan can relate to this. Um, you know, I'm gonna be cliche for a second, but they call it martial arts for a reason, right? To to people that practice it, it's an art. Like there's an art to it. There's a, a way that you can like the strokes of a pen, you know, I can write a story, you can copy the exact same words, and that story can have very different feeling when it's read off a piece of paper. 
the mm. movements that I can do. Ryan knows the exact same movements, but the way that we put them together in series and in time, or what makes the art out of it. So that that translation, that story becomes what what the unique part of it is, not the actual movements, not the notes, obviously, chord, how many chords are there? there's only so many, right? But it's the way that you put those things right. together in sequence and in time that really makes it unique. So kind of going back to what we talked about with influence before. And some of that spillover. Are you do you notice that? Well, you don't listen to a lot of popular music now, and I understand that totally. But do you notice now with the current environment being saturated a little bit more with the negative energy and the uh, you know friction socially that that spills over into your art a little bit more? Obviously, okay. I know you guys well enough to know that we don't. None of us let it affect our day to day. We all do what we got to do. But it's that vibe that it's out there. It's there to be felt. Does any of that? You know, similar to what we talked about with previous influences, does any of that spill into your creative process? Do you notice that any more of that coming out in your music more recently than before? Well, uh, I find that I have, uh, I have, I feel more inclined to write patriotic music, you know, because uh, of what's going on right now. Uh, the, that's the only thing it makes me want to speak out more, and I, it makes me want to add it to my uh, to my craft instead of just you know posting away on Facebook about how I feel, just putting it into a song. You know, uh, I don't know how I'm going to approach that quite yet, you know, because uh, there's a thin line between the funk and the cheese. But uh, <laughs> that's, a that's the second quote of the day right there. <laughs> a real original. You can, you can write that on the wall. I like right? that. I like that. So we've got fast food music and a thin line between the funk and the cheese. I like it. I mean, yeah, those are two like, keepers today. <laughs> you got to be careful. You know, you got to be, be careful because, you know, uh, with uh, great intentions at one thing, but like the delivery is everything, you know? And uh, like, I, I haven't figured out how I'm going to make a song about patriot being patriotic without sounding like a cheese ball. But like, I have to do it. There's a way to do it. You know what I mean? And uh, I will figure it out, but I don't know how to do it yet. I it's, see you know a what? Lee Greenwood collaboration on the horizon. Oh yeah. I would love that. Uh, you know, awesome. uh, sometimes it takes another chef in the kitchen, you know? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Like there, there's, um, well, Keith, I know you, your kids are a little bit older, so I'll throw this one over to you. What do you find in your day-to-day action-wise that you're having to do, if anything, um, to maybe filter some of the stuff that, that your boys are consuming? And if there is a line, and do you let them listen to the stuff that we listen to? It's funny that you say that because literally as I'm doing it, I'm having to restrict stuff <laughs> on my son's iPad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yours. <laughs> and then pointed them out too. <laughs> so yes, there is a limit to some of the things that... <laughs> that they listen to and watch and that kind of stuff you're not allowed to have that <laughs> because you're so, not allowed to so have for it. How, how do you how do you walk that line then knowing that the potential to still become a decent virtuous hard-working man is there obviously we listen we all listen to two life crew we've all heard it before we're still here. We're having this conversation. We're, we're three of us are our parents. I know Jason's a hard work and virtuous ass dude communicates his message as much as possible. Obviously there's positives that can still happen. So how do you draw that line then in being responsible ish and letting them enjoy maybe some of the things that we enjoyed and, or being a, a, a you know, a, a good dad. See, now I'll, I'll go back kind of, and then I'll kind of transition for, for us, that kind of stuff, that was like questionable or like you said like too loud you had to seek it out like yeah. you truly had to go seek it out and you gotta remember you couldn't buy those unless you were i think 18 and over once they put the unless um, you sent your son to the store to get it for you right Weez? well right. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> <laughs> so you know once they stuck those parental advisory stickers on it you couldn't even buy it until you were 18 yeah. so you know, that's kind of, and then like any type of like adult magazines or pictures and stuff like that, you know, you got that from like somebody's like older brother or like that kind of stuff. So it wasn't like it was readily available to you. You I truly don't. had to go seek it out. Where now, which is why I'm having to restrict, you know, <laughs> stuff, it's there. Like uh, it's 
everywhere. And I mean, you know, they're bombarded with it. I mean, you can type in the wrong thing in any one of our phones and you're like, oh God, that's not what I meant. <laughs> so yeah. you can only imagine, you know, kids who, some, you know, they're younger, they don't spell things the right way or they go, hey Siri, pull up, you know, and Siri pulls up something that's totally different. And they're like, oh, what's this? And they go down that rabbit hole. So you kind of got to protect them from themselves. So it's kind of... <laughs> Yeah, so you gotta almost know what a mouth moisture was. Yeah, so you kind of gotta like you know almost not you know you don't want to restrict everything they do because you know there's some you know you want to you want to trust them you want to you know give them you give them the tools so they know kind of what to do what they shouldn't do that kind of stuff you want to give them some level of trust. However, the flip side of that, as a parent, you're looking out for their best interest, and you know once they start consuming some of this content that's out there on a regular basis is not healthy for them and it can really take them down a road that they don't need to go down so that's kind of where i have the balance where it's like certain things anthony well you've met him there's no you know he's like nope not doing it it's not my thing i you know where you know even some songs with explicit lyrics he's like dad is there an edited radio version of this he's like you know where dante i had to you know stop him from listening he's like oh i doubt i was listening to eminem and i'm like oh, i'm like you're 11 <laughs> Like not but he that. flows, Dad. He flows. Right. <laughs> so you know, it's stuff like that. So you kind of got to restrict, you know, kind of hone it in. And like, I found all, you know, so it was funny. We were just talking about it the other day. It's was like, oh, have him listen to this artist and that artist. Like he's hard, but then he doesn't curse. And he's like, you know, so there's like different things out. There. Like I found a, I made him an old school playlist with like, you know. Eric B and Rakim and like the DOC, EPMD, like, you know, stuff I like that, that where like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with like yeah, some public, yeah, some public enemy stuff where it's like harder stuff, but it's like, there's no language in it. Like, you know, it's not, it's, and these were hardcore, you know, we, we consider them hardcore rappers back then, you know, really the true, what we consider explicit rap and like that kind of stuff didn't come out till kind of later on like the late 80s early 90s with where you got you know kind of the west coast with like the nwa and like that kind of stuff with the gangster rap but besides that yeah remember like the battle rappers of like that it wasn't about cursing and all that kind of stuff it was about basically an expanded truly an expansion of like the dozens game so it was kind of like you picked out that person's weaknesses and you just rapped about it. You flowed, you know, you kind of flowed about, you know, either, the, you know, like their basketball game or their sneakers or, you know, or, you know, your, your whack ride or your mama or, you know, <laughs> that's what, that's what it was when we were growing up. It wasn't all about, you know, who slept with who and I'm going to, I'm going to shoot you and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and MF this. Like that wasn't, that wasn't battle rap back in the day like that came out like with gangster rap like that's where that came out so like when you know listen to like what i consider like harder rappers from growing up i'm like yeah listen to that i'm like those battle rappers back then like they were fabulous they were just great lyrics and they had the ability and they like knew the dictionaries and they sometimes that was the best part of it sometimes you had somebody that truly were was good with words like epmd i not EPMD, like um krs1 was just you know he was a philosopher so he would say stuff to you and you're like did he just insult me like oh i gotta get the dictionary out and you couldn't like it wasn't like back where you could go google what he was saying like you're like did he and then also the crowd's like oh you're like did he just insult me and you're like, coming through you know? an encyclopedia like, right <laughs> so true so true I got um I gotta go, but I gotta ask one serious question to you guys. Um, before I go, I gotta get up early in the morning. Um, Public Enemy. I I know just about every um every lyric to every 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 rhyme. I know everything. That's what I grew up on. How the hell did Flavor Flav and Chuck D ever? How did that come about? Because in no other world, mm. no other dimension, I know he's the hype guy. I know Flavor Flav is mm. the guy, but they're not even all I all I imagine now when I listen to the music. All I imagine is Chuck D thinking in his head, "Man, I sh- wish he would shut the fuck up." <laughs> I'm trying. To, I'm trying to say it's, something. Here. It's so funny that you say that because I forget what how they met, but they were kind of almost like two peas in a pod and 
their their they their goal truly was only to have a five year run. Like when they got together, like we're gonna we're gonna do this, do this strong for five years, and then that that was gonna be it. So when it kind of went a little bit longer than that, they were kind of like shocked. And because they're like literally like we're gonna do this is a five year run. Like we're gonna come out, we're gonna hit them hard, we're gonna tell them these things, and that's it. We're gonna, you know, deliver our message and it's gonna be five years. Um, and that and that was it. So it was like, you know. The, if you if I, I forget what documentary it was, but if you, you could probably Google it, I'm sure it's out there now. There, there but needs kinda... to be a, just on them. There needs to be a documentary. Yeah. I've never seen any. There needs to be a documentary on everything from the beginning to the present with with uh, public yeah. enemy. It, it's out. It's out there. I forget. It's been a while. If I find it again, I'll I'll try to post it or something. It's really good. But it talks That's about you know the five year run, how they came up with everything, and like that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's really well done. It's and it's. It, oh, I want to say it was like a behind the music, maybe VH1 or something like That's that. Good. But yeah. yeah, the the um tribe called Quest one is excellent. The one that yeah. was uh, tribe man, I love tribe. Uh, Michael so. Rapper. Yeah. I would like really? to hear an album with him and Old Dirty Bastard. Oh. ODB. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but ODB can rap, dude. That was yeah, he could. Flame, you... Flame was just yelling on tracks. ODB. Oh, Flame was, wasn't ODB. bad. You know, yeah. Flame, Flame had ODB a couple of you know, no, yeah, no, but he was fun to Come on. It's not come on. It's not even <laughs> close though. Oh, oh their personalities are very close. Oh, so, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. ODB was just wild. But he can ODB can rap, man. He, he stood on his own in the Wu Tang. He had oh, I love albums, ODB. like oh, or, yeah. or sweet baby Jesus. Sweet, sweet baby, baby Jesus. Big baby big, Jesus. Dirk McGurk. Big, big, big. <laughs> Did you see the um everybody seen the um Netflix Wu Tang um yeah. series? Yeah, like yeah. in the beginning, in the beginning, I was like. No wait, who's this guy supposed to be? Who, which one is which character? Who is he supposed to be? <laughs> but but when ODB comes in, it's like that's ODB. That's him right there. <laughs> All right, guys. You, I you, thanks, Ryan. We appreciate you, bro. Nice meeting you, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Right so um, let me toss it back over to Keith. We'll kind of reset here, uh, talking about music and culture and all that stuff um i kind of got a little bit of what your thoughts were jason and we started getting a little bit of a rabbit hole and uh really good <laughs> really good in-depth conversation so we'll take a, a slight backtrack and reset um i'm curious as to what your thoughts are keith coming from a slightly different perspective you brought up gangster rap and that's one example obviously but we'll, we'll use that as our as our our test subject here the culture of these types of things, right? Gangster rap is a great example. Does the temperature of the country and what people are going through dictate what's going on in music? Or does the music, the flavor of the music steer the culture? And you can even compare then to now. What, I'm curious what your opinion is. Well, I'm gonna come at it from two different ways. Speak on it. Yeah, so the first one I came about, so my dad was a pastor. So I grew up in a, you know, my dad was a pastor, so I was a PK. So for me to listen, truly listen to anything like outside of like gospel music, it was like, like when I talk about, you know, I was hiding in my bedroom, like, you know, like turning on the radio and listening to it really, really low so I could hear it late at night. Like that's how I like truly under like we had to listen to like what we called power 99 fm back in the day of philly radio station like the hip was considered the hip-hop station like that's how i used to have to listen to it and like q102 like the pop music stage stuff like that so that's kind of how i got exposed to all different types of music was that way and then you know coming you know friends family that kind of stuff but in the house all i heard was gospel music like there was nothing so like truly understanding the temperature of you know, kind of what was going on and in, in the culture in the world it was more so originally from a true religious perspective so it was truly just you know sin that's going you know <laughs> everything like that you know um but then as i kind of got more exposed and a little bit older that's when i was able to understand and able to listen to true like pop culture music so that's where i kind of you know understood like started listening to hip-hop and everything else and heavy metal and everything else that was out there so that's kind of where i kind of transitioned as i got probably like 12 14 um to be able to listen to like different types of music then i'm kind of like oh like 
that's what's going on. Like, you know, I grew up, you know, my dad's church was in West Philly, but we grew up in the suburbs of Philadelphia. So like 30 miles Northwest of that. So it's like, you know, I would hear about stuff with police and like that kind of stuff. But I'm like, oh, there's like truly like police brutality. Like, like I always heard, you know, my parents always warned me, oh, you're out, you know, do this kind of stuff. And, but I'm like, I'm walking throughout my development, you know, <laughs> like that kind of stuff. But then, you know, I actually had an incident happen to me where it was like, you know, I was like out walking in our development and something happened because they were like, oh, there's a black guy. And I'm like, yeah, I live here. <laughs> kind of thing. And so I'm like, holy crap, like people do get truly singled out because of their race. And that's kind of when like things like started to like, and like, I would always, you know, my parents always told me like, you know, when you're out, you know, uh, you know, watch, you know, people are always watching you. So, you know, make sure you don't put your hands in your pockets. And like when you're in stores and don't touch things, like, but I'm like, it never really dawned on me. Then all of a sudden I'm starting to hear all this music stuff about, you know, you know, uh, and I'm like, wow, I'm like, this is like really, truly what's going on in the world. So like really opened up my eyes to things and then start talking to like more and more people kind of talking with their experiences and that kind of stuff. I was like, wow, this is really what's going on in the world. So then as I'm listening to the music and as I'm kind of fast, you know, kind of going through my life, I'm like, this is really, and a lot of people say, you know, like music's imitating, you know, this or that, but I'm like, I think it's more so it's people's expression of what's going on and art, because music is an art, it's truly the cleanest and most expressive form that people still have left. And so that's the way they can truly express themselves. It's like when you looked at, especially when you, you know, you really want to go back to like, you know, slave times like that, where a lot of gospel songs came from and the, the old Negro spirituals, that was their only way to truly express what they were going through and the pain and stuff that they were suffering. So it's like, you looked at what they were going through then and you see these songs and, you know, they're like, and now you transfer, you know, you kind of go up a couple hundred, you know, three, four hundred years. It's like now we're talking about, you know, gang violence and that kind of stuff. And, you know, get, you know, police brutality and all this. So it's like that's what's going on now. So that's what the artists are talking about now. That's what's going on in society. So society, it's just the music just kind of keeps going with what's going on in society. Agreed. That makes me kind of sad because um, as we were talking about before you jumped on, I don't disagree with you, Keith, but um, if that's the case, then that means everybody's thinking about killing themselves and having sex and that's it. <laughs> like well, right they now. Want about that. They, that's well, what they want. you got well, to look at now, like how, how high the suicide rate is. Like it's like the almost the highest that we've ever had um so and just look at in our area how many murder suicides there's been in the last you know couple six eight weeks there you know it's all it's over tremendous. look at the last two years it's nuts yeah and i know this goes back to some of the stuff that you're kind of passionate about and you and keith uh have parallels on this jason so i'll throw it back over to you um but with with what keith just said putting a little bit of a pin in that do you think that we'll use that specific example of suicide Obviously, we know that it's up over the last couple of years for probably uh, only a couple of reasons, but we'll say a few. Um, do you think that the music, and I know we're kind of repeating the same question here, but right now, this pocket of music that we're talking about, do you think that that's reflecting the mindset of the society or it's steering the society towards that mindset? I feel, I feel like they're steering it. I think there's, a, there's people in charge what's going on you know and they they handpick certain uh certain things you know like certain topics like with movies even you know it's like a lot of pre predictive programming a lot of steering uh, of mentalities and uh I, I mean even though i don't agree with a lot of it like i don't blame the artist even because they're just taking their opportunity and they want fame you know they're, and they're expressing themselves but i think for that to be in the forefront there has to be an intention you know behind it so I, with, I personally do with that intention, you're talking from the, the powers that be correct. Not the artist, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So you, yeah. you, you being an artist, have you ever <clears throat> felt any of that type of pressure to conform? Hey, you're a good singer. Hey, you play the guitar well, but you need to sing about this or that. Never. I don't even do covers. No, I, I I'm, I'm very, I'm very serious about writing in the moment. Like, and like, 
pretty much writing against what's going on if anything like like i, I don't agree with it so like you know I, i'd rather write uh from a human level than from an agenda you know so, so i don't want to i don't want to blend in i'd rather stand out absolutely and, and there's a lot there's no one wants to be in the masses right it's hard to it's hard to stick out of the crowd when you just well, rank and file but it's um well yeah you're right a lot of people do because it's easy and we've talked about that in some of our other no episodes like too. That. everybody the easy right. thing is people want to do the easy thing because it's easy but there's no growth in the easy, easy path you have to uh, refine no. yourself no. through through uh through a little bit of struggle and a little bit of pressure you know what i'm saying um well if there isn't a path create one you know and, and, and i really believe in that yeah there is a um an aspect of what you just mentioned between cover songs and, and writing and creating and, mm -hmm. and if anybody's ever paid attention to what we do i'm obviously you guys know i'm a little bit on the woo woo side with some of this stuff and i really embrace uh when we get when i get an opportunity to shoehorn this stuff into a conversation um <laughs> the 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 transfer of energy is a very real thing whether however you want to interpret it right there you go that's all about absolutely and we've talked about this earlier right we talked about it indirectly and um you know that the feelings that it can convey the fact that it can instantly take us back in time brings up specific memories it can steer certain aspects of our personality and these key developmental points there's a transference of energy happening, whether it's in the harmonics or the, the lyrics or the audible sound of the, uh, the artist's voice. Do you find that there's a, a drop off? I've only heard you do a cover once or twice. And uh, mm -hmm. one of them was a song that I really enjoy. Um, but do you feel like there's a drop off or a diminished quality in, in your ability to transfer that energy to the listener if it's not your original music? I absolutely do, because I, I feel like I'm telling someone else's story. And I, I try to do it my own way. That way it's, uh, it's I make it my own, but uh, it's just not the same. Like, uh, like I said, the song pretty much writes itself for me. And I feel like uh, being a part of that experience brings me more into the experience, you know, more into the song. And um, when I'm covering someone else's, it's, it's, it's easier, to be honest. It's a lot easier. Uh, but I just don't like that. I, I like the challenge, I guess, to, to try to grab people's interest without playing something that they're familiar with already. Like it's, I, I think it's kind of easy to be honest, just to be like, if I start off playing uh, brown eyed girl, you know, I'll have everybody dancing around and everybody's like, Oh, you know, but like, I'd rather grab them from a, from a, from a place they've never been and carry them through a song they've never heard before. And at the end be like, damn that I felt that, you know what I mean? And uh, that to me is, is a true artist approach. Um, that is the masterpiece, you know, being able to make someone feel what you're saying. Well, even so much so that it might come at the detriment of uh, group drunken enjoyment. Uh, well, i.e. the cover, drunken. the cover band at the at the bar, you know, playing all the all the hits, playing all the cover songs that everybody knows and can sing and belt all the lyrics right. out to, versus communicating your story and your message and maybe actually touching one or two or five people in the crowd versus appealing to everybody that oh, all day. is just listening but not really hear i'm sorry hearing the music but not really listening to the music right right well that 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 is the uh that is the hard part is uh, and and that makes my job extremely challenging is like seeing cover bands go out there and like rock it out and have a blast everybody's into it and then i come up there with my stuff and i mean and i i can get a whole crowd involved but i mean uh, it's a, uh, more of a chance for me not to get their attention, and if I'm um, if I'm uh, playing something they've, they've never heard before, uh, I like there is there is an issue with that. Honestly, uh, I, I prefer to go my own route, but it would be a lot easier if I didn't. But uh, like, really, if it's easy, is it worth it? You know, and like uh, I know a lot of people who have like played covers their whole life, and they have told me, and I can see in their eyes that they feel soulless about it. They like like I feel like there's no there's no victory there. It's already been done. You Going know, through the motions. Yeah. Yeah. It's nothing, really, nothing yeah. worth doing is ever easy. I can tell you that. Yeah. For sure. And they're just going to paycheck at that point. You know, I'd rather earn it. I'd rather earn everything that comes with my title, you know, instead of just like uh, just going up there and, and just doing what, you know, just being, being the, uh, 
just being like the, the jester in a sense. Just like that's hey, called virtue, have- Jason. You're a virtuous yeah. guy. You want to earn your keep. That's not a bad thing. Um, I know oh, Keith, no. Keith I know you got to bounce. I want to toss back over to you real quick. Um, I, I, being that you've got obviously a, a, a vast taste in music, like you've told us just, you know, from the exposure that you've got when you started being able to get out there and really dig into some different stuff, uh, being a fan of music and, and understanding, you know, where this stuff comes from, the different feelings that you've had when listening to these different types of music at different points of your life. Do you feel a difference in what's received from an artist? You know, let's say you're at Stilt House uh, in Palm Harbor, by the way. Come have a craft beer if you guys ever in Palm Harbor to come visit. Um, Stilt House Brewery. Um, You know, if you're in there listening to covers, having a good time versus in there listening to an original artist, does the does the original music maybe take away because you have to pay more attention to that versus the social setting? Does the cover music make you feel more at ease? What what how do you feel in terms of that energy flow back or forth with the original artist versus the cover artist in that kind of setting? And it's funny you say that. So to me, it's about the overall experience. And so when I know when I'm coming to hear Jay, like I know he's doing original his stuff so to me the vibe like I go into that mentality and my vibe's different than when I come in on a Friday Saturday to the still where another artist is there who doesn't always they don't always do original pieces they do more of their own stuff and it's you know more rah-rah and that kind of stuff and you know everyone's singing along and everything but when Jason's there I know like you know it's more so you know it's that true chill sit back, enjoy, listen to his, because he tells his story. So, you know, it's his story that we're listening to truly. And it's like kind of cool. You always sit back and you're like, and every once in a while, I'm like, do I know that song? I'm like, nope, because he's doing all original yeah. stuff. So it's always yeah. like, you really got to, you know, you know, go remember. It's like, you know, th- these, you really got to pay attention. Right? He's really telling his story. It's not just, you know, you know, a bunch of songs that we can all just sit, sit and, you know, sing along to. And don't get me wrong. His stuff's good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I love sure. your music. But it's like, but it's not that, you know. You're not pop music is like, pop music for a reason, right? Right. It's not that <laughs> total head bobbing where it's like, no, I, I, I really need to like listen to what he's saying. And it's like, you know, you, you just always bring you always bring that energy and it's kind of like you know it's truly i don't even i was trying to put the best way to put it in the word like it's almost that perfect timing so like when you perform when i see you perform the still house it's like that perfect time of day it's that perfect kind of all right i need to kind of unwind and like refocus because i know i'm getting ready to go into the you know my work week truly so it's like let me come in and you know I can just kind of just go away and like you know just unwind and like listen to someone else like just tell their story and it just kind of takes you to a different place where you know if we're doing original pieces you're still gonna you know even if you're doing you know covers it's kind of like oh yeah let's still get hype and you know let's but when I go to listen to you on a Sunday it's more like that all right cool let me chill out you know let me focus on and it, you can take the focus off of me or off of other things and it's truly on you listening to your story and it's i i I enjoy it so oh thank you that means a lot to me keith thank you you're welcome man that's awesome keith i um i know you got to bounce man i really appreciate your time i wanted to i wanted to get your thoughts on that before i let you slide out but uh keith is uh keith is a busy man he's always trying to improve himself so i always appreciate when you carve out some time for us brother thank you very much thank you enjoy what you guys do love you guys love you too man Respect. Thank you, brother. So that Jason, um, and obviously I'll, I'll, I want you to expand because I'm sure that 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 hit you because it hit me and I didn't even I didn't even perform the songs and that hit me a little bit. But one yeah. thing that really that that really stuck out with what Keith said is that he can sit there and listen and wait. Do I do I know that song? But he doesn't know the song, right? His heart mm-hmm. recognizes the story, and I think that goes back to that layer of truth that we were talking about in the beginning. But go, go ahead, man. I want to hear what you what you think first. What well, Keith just said. What what Keith just said that that is exactly what I hope people do feel because I've been woken up and and uh, inspired by great musicians and and songwriters, and uh, that like it, my life changed. You know, like it changed my life. And and for and my goal is to write music 
that people can let go and just take that ride and and listen to what I have to say. Well, even though I'm no one special, I, only thing special about me is I can I can t- show you how special you are. You know what I mean? Like I, I, that's what that's what music is is about. You know, and um, and uh, for, for but for him to recognize what I do, uh, uh, that is why I do it. I call it the billion dollar check. You know, someone comes to me after a show is like, man, that song. Like it made me cry on the inside. I want, I wanted to cry so bad, you know, because you know it reminded me of my mom or blah blah blah. And it's like, well, dude, that to me is I'll hold that forever every time I play that song, you know, and I'll keep that in mind, you know. And it, it's like it's that is the true purpose of it. Like you were saying, like, and it's this the choke career, the transferring of energy, and like uh, I persevered through a lot in life uh, that uh, I was fortunate to, you know. And uh, it's all about a positive state of mind. And if I can, if I can share that experience, that that path. You know, on the map out of the out of, out of this crap then the, to me then you know that's just the blessing and uh to, to have an intelligent man like like keith you know say that to me it was just like all right man i'm gonna cash that check right now to my heart beautiful you know? dog fucking you know? beautiful and i think <laughs> i think as 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 leaders and as as virtuous men capital mm-hmm. m men yes that it's almost inherent upon us to, to do that, to, to lead in any way that we can, whether yes. it's through, through our art, through example, whatever it is to, to, to be that, that beacon for people, like you said, and yep. the accolades aren't required, but man, when you get it, that's got to feel amazing. Oh, I, the only parallel I can make is like, I, I'm an instructor. I teach when I have a new student, like, like really get a concept, not like I showed you the first time, but like, you can see it actually clicks. Like, oh shit right right they have that little moment i get like fuck, it, like i get giddy dude like the hair on my arm stands yeah. up like i've done it a million times it doesn't mean shit that one time that they get it and i can actually see it go in their head and they never screw it up well not never screw it up again but they can recognize it and they can get to it and they can do it with repetition and, and quality in their repetitions it's like oh i can imagine it's probably somewhat close to what you feel in one of those kind of moments You're right I can imagine that too, honestly, because I, I think it's it's instilled in, in, in me and I, and I believe it in you. I can see it. I know it in you. It's each one, teach one. You know, if you have the answers and you keep them to yourself, what is the point of having the answers? Zero. You know, like they're really zero point. Like, 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 so, you know, it's really about each one, teach one, you know? Um, and I love what you do because I know you change people's lives. Like it's, it's like you teach them to defend themselves and you teach them to be confident. You know, like that's a big thing about martial arts is, discipline and confidence you know Absolutely. and uh so that has to resonate in your life you know sure. so like uh i think they're very comparable i think i think they're very much comparable i think if you make an impact on someone's life that's just what it is you know like making an impact and and knowing that in your life that you know if you didn't exist at least this one person wouldn't have known what you have to offer you know and that's just beautiful i think that's the whole point of life honestly is uh this is there's a quote uh, the meaning of the, of life is to give life meaning, and um, you know, and and to be able to be the meaning of, of of something, you know, like even if it's just a to between two and four o'clock on a Sunday to somebody, you know, that to me is wonderful. You know, it's it's really it makes life that much worth living. You know, the the secret that I've been able to find to refining the ego down to just this little pipsqueak that I have to. I'll shut up every once in a while. It's not gone. He's never gone. Um, mm-hmm. Especially as a competitive athlete, I need it sometimes. So yeah. Let's be honest. Um, yeah. But the secret, my- the, exactly. The secret that I found to to keeping that at bay is, like you said, that each one teach one mentality. It's the I've I've through the efforts of others, not on my own, solely through the efforts of others, been able to unlock this reservoir of, of power and confidence and energy within myself. Mm-hmm. it's almost a detriment to the people around me if i just keep it like it's the most selfish thing i could do because the people that right. showed it to me didn't keep it they they willingly gave it to me so yeah, who, am I, who am i to just hold on to it like it's mine it's never it was never mine it was shared with me i have to share it with other people absolutely and you have great communication skills which translates into teaching skills if you can communicate you can teach you know and and i think it's important that you're doing what you do you're using what 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 was given to you you know, and you're showing people how to teach others too. You know what I mean? It's important, man. Like if we don't take the tools that we're fortunate enough to to either have naturally or, or have cultivated throughout our time here, like, like you said, what, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? 
What are you doing? Yeah, old- <laughs> <laughs> You're a paperweight, man. Like, like, it's like having like. <laughs> And it's like it's like, like if I had a million bucks, but I never bought nothing for nobody, not even myself, just sat around bored yeah. for a long time. Like, no, it's silly. Go out there and spend it, man. Well, like, like and, and, yeah, a million bucks isn't worth anything if nobody can spend it. Yeah, if you just keeping it to yourself, <laughs> you know what I mean? Doesn't make sense. It does. Yeah. So I, I do I do wanna while we have a little bit of time here, um, before we wrap up, I want to touch a little bit more on that that conspiratorial stuff. And maybe I'll even pause and we'll save that for the for the post show. Just do a little snippet on that. But um <laughs> I'm oh, curious, yeah. just in terms of you as a, as an artist, I don't know if I've ever asked you before, but are you like classically trained? Are you self-taught? I'm completely self-taught, unorthodox to the fullest. I don't know what chords I'm playing. I don't know any of it. I know like the, the cowboy chords that I'm playing, but when I go down the scale, I have no idea. Uh, I'm 100% a vessel for the universe and, and it just flows through me. Like a lot of my music writes itself and then I remember it through muscle memory. And the way I remember my lyrics is that if I don't remember, what I improv before, then I, I I make something else up because like, and then I write it down. Once it sits, it's like it's it flows right the way it is, you know. And uh, it's like if I don't remember the lyrics, no one else will, you know. So if first I write it in my head, if whatever I don't remember, I fill it in with something else. Uh, just a vessel for the universe. I'm self-taught uh, through trial and error. Um, uh, I hated my voice. I began. I got comfortable with my voice. I love my voice. You know, like it's like well, not all voice the time. Is fucking I know when it's terrible. And, um, uh, thank you, man. I appreciate you, bro. I, that's how you and I honestly became well, friends. Is that when I heard you play and I heard the soul that you communicated through your music. That's what led you, me to talking to you, man. Otherwise, you know, I've met m- many musical artists and guests. Only I, I don't know any other ones. Actually, no, I, I have zero other ones that I've become friends with. So, um, it, that, we're, we're that, here. That truth is universal, bro. Um, definitely. Do you? I asked that to ask this, do you find that not having the box of these are your proper chord progressions, this is how you read music, this is the right way to do it, do you feel that that adds to your creativity or to the uh, the conduit aspect of your creative process? Or do you find that it's a, it's a detriment because you don't necessarily have those fundamental, let's say, let's call them book skills to fall back on? Mm-hmm. Well, I feel in the beginning of my career, it, it was definitely detrimental. You know, it was something that like, uh, if I played with another musician, I would need someone who knew how to translate it with me, like on stage, It'd be like, he's playing this chord, he's playing that chord. Like it, it ruined my leadership in the beginning to the point where like, I, I, I needed to have someone on there. But uh, as time went by, I knew like roughly the chords to tell them just from hearing people say it. it's like I'm going to F I think right here you know what I mean because I've heard people say it before you know what I mean yeah. but like in time I just, yeah it, it became easier because trial and error you know I, I just learned see I'm colorblind and I've learned that grass is green and sky is blue so if something looks green then it, it looks like grass it must be green so like I, I everything correlates so I learn as I go so as I learned it's easier to go you know sure. uh, I think I think now, uh, what, what from not being self, uh, from not being um, classically trained, it's an advantage of when I'm by myself. Uh, I can't just jump in with the band and jam out. Look, oh, Fearless playing with the band. I can't do that. I have to lead. I have to lead. If not, then I'm useless. I, I can, or I drop the guitar and I can just improv all day on vocals. But not everybody feels confident doing that because they don't know I, I can lose it. And it's I, I, I'm very confident in my in, in, in my improv skills, but. Not everybody's gonna want to jump to like jump to that on stage when you know we want we want to be presented as as, sure. as professional. Especially if yeah. they came up in that in that same box that we were just talking about, right? Like if that's yeah. if that box is all they know, anything outside <laughs> of that's probably really scary. Well, wait, what what key are you singing in? Uh, the key, yeah. the key, oh, bitch, sit back. <laughs> the key of keep the fuck up, baby. Let's go. Exactly. Just follow my- <laughs> <laughs> While you talking, play right. You shouldn't be talking. There's pretty girls out here. No, I'm kidding. That's no, no, it's that's, that's funny, man. Like it's well, it's something I've never gotten to ask you before. It's something that I was very curious about because I I have a lot of love, a deep a deep affinity for for music. Um, it was something my, my dad it. and I bonded over. Um, it, it's just a, a deep 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 love for music, and honestly, it's translated into to art in general. Like Keith was talking about, I'm realizing, and Ryan mentioned it too not just the genre of music, but I'm, I'm getting this appreciation for expression, um, human expression, whatever 
you know, whatever that looks like, whether it's a, an artistic medium, like, a, you know, a, an oil painting or a canvas or martial arts or music or whatever it is, right. like there's so many layers and, and variables and just, it's such a hodgepodge of circumstances to get to that like result of here's the finished piece. You know what I mean? Like there's so much that went into that, that nobody sees, you know, and so much like on my end, it's, you know, 10, 15 years of training on yours, on your end, it's, 20 years of, of struggling and learning and, and training your ear to know those chord progressions, even though your hands have no fucking idea what chords they're playing. No, I, you can recognize it just by hearing it and you know, yeah. sound wise where you want to be. Nobody gets all that on the surface when they just hear you sing. But when you really sit in and let that energy pass through you, it's so wild that all that stuff can be felt. You know what I mean? That's the most beautiful thing true. about it to me. It's, it's like so it's beautiful. like a magic trick. It's like a magic trick. What they see is what you want them to see. Mm-hmm. They don't see like the person crawling into the box behind the scenes. They don't see all the work it takes that you don't want them to see. Like they don't see the 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 heartbreak it took to write that song. They only hear the aftermath. Like you're right. They only see the finished product. But there's so much, and that's just in the songwriting. You know, like in this, you go in the studio. The production is just a whole new art of itself. You know, like. I'll write the music, I'll play the music, but then when I get in the studio, it's a different, you're a Wizard of Oz. It's like, oh, this guitar uses a little reverb, Bing! you know? Like, you know, you just, you do some things in there that just really bring out the intention of the song, and it's an art of itself. So it's so much involved in it that even my shows, when I play a show, everything has to be equalized just right. The speakers have to be pointed in a certain direction. There's so much to know. You know, uh, you pop a string, how are you going to play that chord, you know, without it? You know what I mean? Like, you have to learn, like, reversed versions of it like oh you know i've learned that the a is right here so if that happens and i'm missing this string this must you know this will work right here instead and it's like quick on the spot stuff you know if you don't know the chord strum just strum and sing and then apologize at you know before the end of a song be like you know like end it quicker and be like okay i'm gonna change my string i'll I'll come back it's like certain things you have to learn how to do on the fly without freaking out because that's the first thing your brain's like freak out and you're like no don't freak out you know, like it's, it's it's just a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure on the spot. And I think that took the most getting used to is learning how to not on a perfect day. You know what I mean? A perfect day. Everything goes smoothly. It's like, OK, that was awesome. The days where everything goes wrong and still making the crowd feel that nothing went wrong. You know, that's the hardest thing. That's where experience comes into play. Bro, you know, the parallels you're drawing are like they're tickling mm-hmm. me right now. Like I, I, yeah. I preach literally almost word for word the exact same thing i have my my younger sister and my fiance are both new in their jiu-jitsu journey and um i I find myself saying this to students a lot that are on the the newer end of their journey it's it's not the days that you're fucking feeling gassed up and you're in there killing it and and just feeling yourself wrecking people those aren't the Mm -hmm. days where you get the best gains it's the days where you don't fucking want to be there you drag yourself into the gym and you do it anyway those yeah. are the days where you get the most fundamental gains. Well, because you start off at negative five and you end up on, on positive 10, you know, it's so easy to, to, to get to climb up there. If you're starting at a, a plus three, you know, you're Absolutely. like, yeah, you know, and it, it, I mean, and God bless those days, you know, like, sure. I, you gotta you have them too. You gotta have them. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's how you gain that confidence. But like, but, uh, I mean, actually, the truest way to gain confidence is to know that you can uh, you can steer that you can steer that that plane from hitting that building, you know, with a broken engine. You know, it's like, oh, damn, I, I'm a boss. I'm a fucking boss. You know, I mean? I, I, you know that, that should have been disaster. But I, I, I'm here. Here I am. I'm gonna tell my mom about it. Shit. You know what I mean? Like, like I get to live to tell stories, you know, you know? Yeah. But like that is like that's a real thrill. But the cool thing about it is how that stuff can translate to life too. Like that's like you mentioned it before, but these things are allegory. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. without knowing you personally prior to the relationship we have now, right? You know, I I can only imagine how that buildup of confidence on stage has affected your life positively off stage. Because I oh yeah, it's exactly the same for me within the the martial arts. Yeah, we walk into rooms like you know I've. I've, you know, I can imagine in your in your case, I've walked, I know I can clear out this room. You know, you know, first of all, you know that you know, <laughs> I know that has to be like, all right, you size the people up in a kind way. In a kind <laughs> way as, not, as a martial artist should. I mean, I mean like, I, it's not necessarily size of people. I'm, I'm keying, you know I mean? I'm keying for stuff, and I'm looking for yeah. exits always. But you're not wrong. Yeah, you know, say you're not wrong. You right. know, and when I go when I go in front of a group of people, and I'm like, I, 
I, I come up here basically butt naked spiritually, you know, and I and I sing my heart out. I can handle standing right here where everybody's looking at me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, There's, you know, who I gotta be afraid of? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've done uh, worse. Absolutely. It's like a porn star being afraid of being naked. It's like it's like what? Like yeah. you're naked all the time, bro. Like you just doing got an eggplant in your butt. Like relax. Man. <laughs> Which is impressive. Which impressive. Is, I, it, was, it was impressive, but well, why well, like, you to, your, about to your point, like since I've really and not at the beginning, because I was a young man too, and part of its mm-hmm. age and maturity. I'm not gonna be silly no, about that, but the, the, the other side of it is once I really got into martial arts and fell in love with it, I haven't been in a street fight in almost that's years. what I hear all the time from professionals like you. Man. That's what I hear all the time. What do I need to prove? No parts out of it. You know you can whoop ass. Nope. Uh, back then, people people that start fights now they have something to prove. Absolutely. You I, will, I, mean? I you can step on my shoe. I'll buy you a drink and apologize and tell you to have yeah. a man. Like, what, what do I need you to crack your head out. for? <laughs> you already know. You know. Yeah. And, and the same thing. Me, someone tries to see like like uh, get competitive. That happens a lot as musicians. You meet people and they're like, oh yeah, you know, I can play this and I can play that, and, you know. Like, well, I have this guitar, it's a thousand dollars, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay. Cool, bro. All right. I, I don't even join in. I don't be like, well, I open up for Dirty Heads and uh, and I open, you know what I mean? I don't start, like, shooting out stuff that I'm proud of, but, like, I don't, I don't start becoming, like, competitive because I already know in my heart. It's like, just let him. He, he doesn't He doesn't get to do this much. Yeah. Let him do it. Okay. You just got off the stage. Let him have his little shine. You feel yeah. good, buddy? All right, cool. <laughs> let him like, oh, yeah. oh, you can play uh, Stairway to Heaven? It's neat. Awesome. You know, I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which it is you know it's not I, I don't talk down on it it takes a lot to learn but sure. like still like, but like yeah I, I have enough confidence within myself to be like oh hear them out and not be like well well i can do this and you know like it's like i have nothing to prove i don't care like I, I prove what i prove when i do what i do you know just like you you know just is this it's like uh i prove to me that's what i've learned i want to impress myself and I want to impress, you know, my girl, you know, like I really do. And I want to impress the people that believe in me. You know, the people who are like, yeah, it's my boy. It's like, yeah, well, you fucking rhyme, your boy. Like, be proud of me. You know what I mean? Like, like I, that's my fuel. Like, but mostly myself. If I don't impress myself, if I'm not having fun and enjoying myself and being like, good job, Jason, then it, you know, it's, it's not worth it at that point because like, I, I, it doesn't matter what people think. When I started getting compliments all the time and then I would get criticism in the beginning, it would bother me, but at the same time, it's like it doesn't matter what people say. It's their opinion. I mean, like it doesn't define me. That's their opinion of me, you know. And it's like, you know, as long as I know that I'm doing the best I can and I'm trying to deliver the message that I have without without selling out or 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 giving in to pressure, then I'm proud of myself, you know. Yeah. And, and and you can you know? also remember, you know, and similar. I'm sure you have the same thing, probably more so than I do. Cause you're, you know, playing with people that are getting that little, little bit of liquid courage in them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Um, but more often than not, they're just projecting. If they're, if they're willing to outwardly walk up and say something negative to you, they're, they're usually just projecting whatever, you know, it's insecurities or shortcomings they have. There's this one person that has come to two shows of mine that has said some really mean stuff, not about my abilities, saying that I'm copying off of other people. And I'm like, I'm an original artist and I've never, this guy is very like weird. Like to where it's like, are you even human bro? Like he's just pure <laughs> negative, pure, just like like a, like a little snake dude. I'm like- Physical I'm like, embodiment I'm like, of a Twitter troll? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but it's like, like his essence is pure evil. Like I, I'm an empath, so I feel people, you know what I mean? And this guy to the bone is evil. And I've seen him at two shows. And I, every time I see him now, I, I just like block him out, Jason. You don't want you want to live your whole life without killing someone. Whole life without killing someone. <laughs> <laughs> whole life without you can do this, Jason. Oh, 80 man. years. I give you 80 years. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, it, I mean it's true though, because he just he goes right to the core. But like for the most part, everybody's extremely nice. And but but the, the thing is when I first started, people had like they had constructive criticism. And I, and I and I've noticed that a lot of them. It came from them wanting to be a part of something they couldn't do. They want to be like, yeah, and you should do this because it's like, well, how about you start a band and you do that? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I well, I can't play music, so. Oh, no, 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 no. Not, <laughs> well, then shut, shut up. up. <laughs> no, I'm talking. I'm, I'm just talking. talking. I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, Let's like, go yeah, start a band. Well, no, I don't sing or play, but you should do this. Look exactly. Here, bro. <laughs> Somebody told me before, it's like, stop joking between songs. I'm like, he's like, you're not a comedian, you're a musician. I'm like, well, you're not a you're you're not a career. Uh, you, you should be giving career advice because that that is yeah. not what you do. 
You know what I mean? Stop giving me advice about my career. You're a mechanic. Here, go sit out. You know, start. Yeah. Yeah, you if know, it's not rotating and, uh, tires. Chill out. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and, and people just want to be a part of something they can't do. And I get that. I sympathize with that actually. But uh, to the point where it starts like getting out of my, out of their lane and into mine, them, uh, that's when I just kind of block them out. It's like, okay, it's nice. Talk. I have to go get my mind. I'm on set break right now. I don't want to sit here and talk. You know, yeah. kindly, I would say something like that. Yeah, because in the end, like that, that's when they attack you. In between sets, they're drunk, and they're just like, ah. Man, you you know you really like should do more covers. I'm like, well, okay, thank you. I'll take that in and throw, put it right where it belongs in the trash. But I appreciate it. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't, you're too I, drunk I don't to know what I'm playing play. anyway. Shut your mouth. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, there's a lot of hateration behind it. You know, yeah, there's a lot of, you know they want they, they started playing high school, uh, playing guitar in high school, and then they stopped. And when they see you playing, it's like, oh, if I were to continue to play at this point, I'd be better than not. Well, it's like stick to it, do your thing. You know, uh, I'm doing mine, and like. I'm, I'm no like I'm no better than anybody. The only way I'm better than anybody is being myself. No one can be me like I'm me, you know. And that that being born and raised in New Orleans is the only way that I, I because I, I used to be a little bit of a hater. I'd watch someone go up there and rock it out, and everybody be into it. They're playing their own original music too in New Orleans, and I'd be like, shit, I'll never be that good. Fuck that, you know what I mean? I'd be really, really just like bitter about it. But then I realized, like, uh, you'll never learn that way. You, you you're really putting a dummy cap on right there. You know, like that's where you're stopping. You know what I mean? And uh, and really, no one's gonna be as good as you at being you. And and the thing about the people that I was insecure about, you know, my this is like when I was in my early twenties. Like uh, I realized that they were just so good at being themselves, and I and I, I didn't quite know who I was yet. I didn't know what my niche was. So like it was just, I guess it was just not knowing is the uncertainty of the future. Really, at the point at that point, it was like, am I gonna be that good ever? Like, am I gonna give up before that? You know, like. Like, I don't want to, like, but this guy is so talented. You know, it's, it's, it's a really tough thing. But um, I think once you get past that, it, it's magic. The you know? fear of, and this is, and, and we're hitting on parallels left and right with, with what mm -hmm. you do and, my, and what I do. But the, the, the fear, Real. the fear of, of outcome is easily, easily, easily overridden by focusing oh on God. the process. You know what I mean? Oh. So we don't have to worry about outcome when we turn our attention to the process. And, and like you said, 100% cannot agree more. The only person I have to outperform is me from yesterday. Yes, 100%. Any other you, comparisons are useless. Everyone else is on their own journey. You know what I mean? Doing their own thing, different circumstances. The only person I got to beat is me from yesterday. Yeah, And I'm it, looking it, to it, whoop his ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, because the truth is, because the truth is, like, it's like, like, let's look at it like on the interstate. Okay, if I drove from here, uh, from Florida, from St. Pete, all the way to New Orleans, right? But um, this other guy gets on the interstate, uh, like right where, right where I'm getting. He lives in Mississippi. He gets on the interstate to head to New Orleans as well. But he, but he, he gets ahead of me. You know what I mean? Like, like, you're, uh, he's not ahead of me on the path. His path started uh, like closer to the destination than mine. Like I went through a lot more before I got there and his life, his road will end sooner than mine. You, we don't, we're on a different timeline. Everybody, mm -hmm. not everybody's going to live to 80. So like whenever someone's doing better than me, it's like that guy might be on a shorter timeline than me. Who am I to say that he has to go at my speed? Yep. You know what I mean? Especially with no up. context. Yeah. No fucking idea. We just see the guy. Yeah, you know what? So, so the, yeah, exactly. So the person getting on the interstate in Mississippi is not beating me. You know what I mean? Like, does it, you know, it's like our, our paths, our paths are similar, but they started and ended. Well, they're gonna end at the same place, but like, you know, they started at different times. And there's a lot to be said about that because um, a lot of people are competitive. But like, you just gotta look at like this a whole picture. Not everybody's on the same path. Like a, a, a different time, a different timeline for sure. Like not everybody's gonna live as long as the next. Not everybody's gonna be um, as productive in this time. You know, so so just cheer them on you know because when you cheer other people on you, you really you learn a lot that way like you you really add on to yourself because now you can adopt a lot of their good habits that way you know if you if you really just block them out and just be like i'll never be that good then you won't you know you'll never be that good you, you know hate never gets you anywhere you know absolutely and, and that's it's a, poison it's, man it's poison it is poison yeah it really poison is poison to the hater not to the hated mm -hmm. so with that um We'll go ahead and wrap things up for the uh, for the main podcast here. I uh, 
I greatly appreciate the perspective. We had uh, my buddy Ryan on. We had Keith come in and check in. We touched on a, a tremendous amount of topics in this overall bubble uh, of how music affects all of our lives and, and you know, the way we see it affecting other people around us. So, yeah. uh, Jay Free, is there any uh, final thoughts or closing words you'd want to leave us with on that? Uh, nothing that comes to mind right now. Uh, I would like to... Uh, I'd like to bring back up uh, what you said earlier. I think that that that, uh, that compete with yourself, you know, like all the time. As far as well, no, yeah, that's that really resonates with me right there. But as far as the whole podcast, um, no, I think everybody summed everything up. Beautiful, man. I uh, I can't thank you enough for your time, bro. It's been a long time in the making. I'm really happy we finally get to get you on. Uh, everybody at Ethereal, Ryan, Keith, Jason, we thank you sincerely for tuning in, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure, Jay. I appreciate it. I appreciate it.